base here on the turn will be lights out. Oh, oh no! God damn! Whoa! Welcome, boys. We are at home right now, and Rosie, it's safe to say our poker coaching has helped out. Yes, there are some pretty crazy plays that you're about to see on this TCH live stream. Stay tuned, buckle up, strap in, let's do it. We look down at Queen Nine of Hearts in the cutoff. We open for $15. We see Tiny on the button call, and Alice in the spot line calls well with 10 8 suited. Flop comes. 10 jack, 9 with two hearts. We flop an open in a straight flush draw. Checks to me. I'm definitely betting. I make it $30 to go. Tiny folds, and Alice makes the call. The turn is the four of spades. I decide to go for a bet of $55, which I think is too small. I was stuck in between bluffing and trying to build a pot. That's such a big draw. Alice is in a tricky spot, and she has a straight draw with the pair, but she does make the fold. Our high equity bluff gets through on the next hand. I straddle up to $6, which I was doing all night looking for some good squeeze spots. Most of the players were limping, so that's why I was doing it. Back to the hand, Alice calls for $6 in early position, as does PM. I look down at Jack-3 offsuit and just check back my option. The flop comes 3-King-3, three, three. we flop Jin, except we're outpipped by Alice. Surprisingly, the flop checks through, so we'll only lose money on two streets. The turn is the eight of clubs. I lead out for $15, trying to get value from single pair holdings, also charging some flush draws. Alice smooth calls and PM comes along as well. The river is the two of spades, complete brick. If I were Frankie here, I'd think my trips were so good right now. Derek, I totally do. I bet $40 and now we do see a raise from Alice to 100. Looking back, I like checking this river to induce bluffs from Miss Flush Draws, but we can't change the past. For only $60 more, I hope she's trying to get more value from a king or bluffing. I call and we get the bad news. Nice hand, Alice. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're playing 1-3. The $10 straddle is on here and Tiny opens up the action to $30 with the best starting hand known to mankind. Bo calls on the button. And we wake up with queens in the small blind, the third best starting hand of all time. Oh no. My x-ray vision is not working, so I go in for a standard out of position three bet with a great hand. I make it 120 bucks. Tiny does a little Hollywood action, but we can see he won't be folding. He goes all in for $428 effective, bow folds, and it's back to me. The $10 straddle makes this jam from Tiny only 43 big blinds technically. We have the third best starting hand in the game. I think that this is just a call here. I slide the chips across the line and I'm shown the bad news. With $900 in the pot, we are off to a run out. It comes nine jack, five rainbow, deuce on the turn, five on the river. Nice hand, tiny. It sucks to get stacked this early, but we are gonna keep our head up and start comeback season. In the straddle again, Bo calls with 6-9 suited and Val raises up to $25 to pocket threes as I look down at ace-5 suited. I like a squeeze here about two thirds of the time, but this time I'm just flat calling, inviting fan favorite Bo to come along as well. He does call and the flop comes 5, ace, 4, 2 diamonds, action flop. I checked the preflop progressor as does Bo and Val fires for $35. Val's seat betting here a ton, and I don't want Bo to fold out an ace if I raise, so I decide to just call here with plans to lead the turn. Bo calls with his flush draw, and the turn comes the eight of hearts. Pretty safe. I lead here for $80, and now I've committed a lot of my stack when I make this bet. Bo picked up the gut shot with his flush draw, and he decides to put in a bluff. He rips it all in for $253. Val folds, and I quickly make the call. I ask him how many times he says twice, and let's see if we can hold as a 75% favorite. First river is an eight, second river ace. Yes, we can. Full house for good measure. Let's go. Here we see Pez open it up to $6 under the gun. Bo calls in plus one. I call in plus two with pocket deuces and the small blind and big blind call. So we're going five ways to a flop. We're hoping for one card and one card only. As the man Wolfgang Poker says, bang, eight, nine deuce on the flop. We hit our set. And when it checks to me, we are going to bet our set. Super wet board, multi-way, I'm sizing up, I bet 25 into 30. Alice calls with top pair, Bo calls with a flush draw, so this could get interesting. The turn is interesting indeed, it's the six of diamonds, bringing in the flush and some straights right away. So when it checks to me, I actually slow down and check it back. I'm happy with this play multi-way as it is more likely someone just got there, and as we can see with Bo, our premonition is correct. Off to the river, please pair the board. Nope, it's a five of hearts. Now putting a four liner on the board as well. However, it checks to me again. 
And I think there is value to be had given my opponent's lines here. I think there is no way a flush would check the river, and there are tons of two pair combos we can get a little bit of value out of. I bet small to either get called light or induce a bluff. Alice folds and a sneaky sneaky bow goes in for that flush river check raise to $75. Bow is one of the most active players at the table, a stream fan favorite, known to get a little bluffy from time to time. A flusher straight does not make any sense given his line. We're getting 4 to 1 on a call. I call, you can see what happens, and Bo takes me to value town on this one. Good hand, man. Oof, Rosie, that's a tough one. Hard to get away there. I pull up to the stream a bit late, but I am ready to play some cards now. I put on a $6 straddle, and we see an open from Bo to 20. Pez calls, and then Tristan. We're playing the 7 deuce game. 3 bets to $75 in the small blind. And sucks for him, but I pick up a hand. Ace, king of spades in the straddle. I'm going to 4-bet this one, and I make it $220 to go. Unfortunately, bow folds, pez folds, and Tristan gets out of the way with the 7-deuce, but we scoop up a little over $100 uncontested. Next hand, we're up against a good player and a friend of the channel, Tristan. He opens pocket 10s and plus 3 to 15. I like down an ace-king offsuit. I 3-bet to $55, fold back to Tristan, who makes the call. The flop comes, ace-7-2, great flop for our hand and amazing for our range. I down bet to $40 like I would do with all the hands here, and Tristan makes the call. The turn is the four of spades, checks to me, and in the moment, I know that I have this hand locked up. Maybe a bit greedy, but I decide to bet one fifteen, to trying to get it all in on the river. Tristan cannot call here with pocket tens, and he makes the fold. I think a check back on this turn would have been really sneaky, let me know what you guys think. As I mentioned before, the 7 deuce bounty game is in act, and we're playing 1 3 10 20 this hand. Yes, you heard that right. There's a double straddle on. We're in an early position and look down at 7 deuce. Let's bump this one up, try to get some folds. I make it $80. Everyone folds all the way around to the double straddle who's Pez. His hand is going to be kept a mystery, and he defends for 60 more. Flop comes 10 high, it's rainbow, and when he checks me, I see about 75, but he makes a call pretty quickly. The turn brings in an offsuit ace, and I think this is a great card to continue betting. I'm going to have plenty of hands like ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack that see bet small on the flop and can go for some value now that I hit top pair. So I'm going to try to pretend like that's exactly what happened. I bet 125, trying to look value heavy, and Pez thinks about it for a while and rips it all in for $375 total. I snap fold. And let's see what he had. 7-3 offsuit. Wow. Okay. We just got owned on television. Nice hand, Pez. Props to you for having the balls to make that play. I respect the hell out of it. On to the next hand. We can't play a stream without Pez getting in a vlog-worthy hand. He opens in plus 2 to $20 with a 7-deuce bounty in full effect. Tristan makes the call, and we look down at Pocket Queens. Of course, we 3-bet, and we choose $85 for our sizing. Pez is not a man to give up the worst hand in poker that easy. He thinks and thinks and then raises to $200. Tristan folds and back to me. I don't really like 5 betting anything, like none of my range, but it does seem like Pez has really committed himself betting almost half of his stack, so I do decide to go over the top all in. Even almighty Pez doesn't feel like calling with 7 high. He folds and we take down a 224 profit. Here we're playing 1-3 with a $10 straddle and there are 1, 2, 3, 4 limpers of this straddle. We wake up with ace queen in the big blind, a perfect spot to open it up big and attack all this dead money. I make it 75 bucks. Pez calls and everyone else folds. Perfect. We are now heads up, go into a flop, which comes queen 3-3 three, three with two spades. Hell yes. Having the ace of spades makes us really have this board locked down. I don't want to scare Pez away, so I see bet on the smaller side, 75 bucks, a little under half pot. Pez has a queen of his own though and rips it all in. We call very quickly. This pot is now over $1,100 off to one run out and one run out only. Can we get the comeback started? Turn is an eight, river is a deuce, we scoop it. Very happy we kept our composure after our first two unfortunate hands. Welcome to the hand of the night. I'm in the under the gun straddle. PM opens plus four to $26. Bow calls in the hijack with deuces. And here in a spot I definitely could raise, I decide to just call, heading off to a flop, which comes. The dreaded queen nine ace. We flop top pair, but PM has a set. Checks to him and he bets $50. He gets bow out of there. And again, with my top pair, I feel pretty cool. I make the call. The turn. Ace here on the turn will be lights out. Oh, oh no! God damn! God. Whoa! 
Ben, you called this so well. I check and we face a jam all in $614 from PM into a $200 pot. Now we are in a spot and a half. The one thing that I didn't notice early on in the hand was that PM was pretty locked in focused. So I put him on a big hand when I just called preflop and now he's putting in a 3x pot size raise. I have trips, but what do I lose to? I lose to ace king, ace queen, pocket queens, and pocket nines. There's not that many hands that I lose to, so I definitely want to make the call. I take a look for the jack of diamonds and I don't have it, so that means he could have jack 10 and diamonds. But again, is he going to be doing this as a bluff enough to make this worth a call? I go well, well, well into the tank. Comment right now what you guys would do below. I make a soul read and a half. I fold my hand and we are right. PM shows queens. I give a good little fist bump and celebration. Happy to lose the absolute minimum in that hand. And now Jonathan Little has something to say about it. Jonathan, what would you do without any live tells with ace jack here in this hand? We see the flop. We obviously are going to check call the flop. And then on the turn, when we check and the opponent makes a gigantic all in, I would just call. I mean, it's an annoying spot, but it's pretty likely you're against an ace or some weird draw, like a combo draw, right? And if you had a hand with a diamond, like say you had the ace with the jack of diamonds, that would actually make me even less inclined to call because when you have the ace with the jack of diamonds, you block some of the most obvious draws like uh, king jack of diamonds and jack 10 of diamonds, right? So with your hand, I would have found a call unless I had some sort of live read that my opponent really loved his hand. But if you think about it, if he really loves his hand, why is he just ripping it in for infinite money? This hand we wake up with the Cowboys, pocket kings and plus three. There's no straddle or prior limper, a rarity for a game like this. And I actually decide to open small here to $10 to potentially bait a three bet or have people think that the straddle's just on. Pez thinks $10 is not enough and three bets to $35. Folds back to me, we four bet to 100. He does end up folding the 10 high, but in a hand where no one had anything, I'm happy to have gotten this extra value with my preflop sizing decision. We look down in my last hand of the night of ace king offsuit and plus four. I open for $15. We get a call from Alice. We get a call from Bo in the big blind hand. Three ways to a flop, which comes eight jack ace with two clubs. Checks to me, I bet $20 and something that I did not want to see actually happens. We get raised by Alice, not by Bo, which is the spot I would like a little bit more. We get raised by Alice, who I have not seen get out of line all night. As we could see, she did turn her gut shot straight draw into a bluff. She got the 10 of clubs. I really, really like this play from her. But in my mind, I'm up against a player who's incapable of making a huge bluff bet of $125 like this. Even though I have the read that she's a tight player and not really a bluffy type, I think I should still make the call here. I think it's a little bit mistake to do what I'm about to do. But I just had that hero fold and a half earlier. Trying to make the highlight reel twice in one night. I make the fold here ace king and alice you got me good nice hand that was the wrong move the cameras are off we didn't get to play too many hands on stream but here's an interesting one when we pick up ace jack offsuit in the button there's a hijack limp and frankie in the cutoff makes it 15. i three bet him here to 50 dollars and it folds back around to him and he makes a call so we're heads up in position and it's king eight five rainbow for the flop when he checks me i'm gonna bet small here 40 dollars pretty much with my entire range he does make the call and the turn brings in the offsuit 10. We now pick up a gut shot straight draw and when he checks me, I'm going to continue barreling on this card. King high flops are typically going to be better for me than him, so I make $105. He thinks about it and makes a call once again. At this point, I'm pretty sure he's got some sort of king x holding. And when the river rolls off a 4 and he checks me again, I don't think any sizing of mine is going to get him to fold top pair especially against me who he knows might try to bluff him more often than usual. I check this one back. He quickly tables king queen offsuit and takes this one down. Nice hand Frankie. Things have not been going our way so far and hopefully we can finally turn it around when we look down at 10 nine of clubs in the small blind. Pez opens to 20 in the cutoff and I'm looking for my revenge. I three bet him to $65 and he makes a call so we're heads up out of position and it's a queen high flop rainbow with one club. 
We got some backdoor draws and I'm itching to win a pot. So I down bet here to $30, planning to barrel pretty hard on some good turn cards. He makes a call expecting to do that with a ton of holdings, even as weak as ace high. The turn is an interesting one, the queen of clubs. We're upgraded to a flush draw. However, this card makes it way easier for Pez to defend if I bet on the turn with pretty much any sort of pair. I think any sizing is gonna get those ace high floats out of the way. However, any pair is probably gonna be sticky to most sizing, especially given it's Pez. I wanna set up a bet sizing that's gonna allow me to jam the river if I hit my flush. So I decide on a sizing of $70 and he decides it's fair enough for a call. The river brings the 10 of diamonds. Honestly, pretty good card all in all, and I feel pretty confident that I've got the best hand here. I think if he had trips, we would have heard about it on the turn, and I wouldn't expect him to have many 10s in his range besides a hand like 10-7 or 10-deuce. We're beating both of those holdings though, and so I think this is a great card to go for some thin value. I bet 125 into the pot, and he pretty much snap calls. I flip my cards over, however, he shows me that he played it tricky, slow playing pocket aces. Pez gets us once again to end the stream, and we rack up down in the dumps this game. Unfortunately, this session did not go our way, but hoping to turn things around on the next one. Juicy one, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you, thank you. I was in for 600, out for $1,000. Love to see it. I was into the game for 1,200, out for 1035. All good. What about you, Jello? Just wrapped it up. Uh, this was a tough one for me. Lost some more after the stream. We were in for a thousand, out for a whopping $48. So tough day for me. We'll get them back next time.